Hey yo, welcome back everybody. This video, we're gonna be talking about properties. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. So the previous video we talked about public fields and I, I mentioned how it wasn't exactly the best practice to do something like that. Rather, you should use fields when you need to store some information behind the scenes or use it as a backing variable for some public interface such as a property. And you'll understand all of that in more detail when we talk about encapsulation, but essentially a property can be used as as a gatekeeper to our fields. So enough rambling, we're just going to create very simple properties to store the person's first name and the person's last name. So we're not going to need this, this public field anymore. If we do wanna create fields in the future and they're not public, you'll, you'll usually have a naming convention of a lowercase first word, so we're gonna use camel casing. So if, for example, if we were storing first name, it'd be like this. And sometimes you'll even see them prefixed with an underscore, which I think is the convention most people are, are adopting these days. So often your fields will look a little bit more like this than what we had earlier. But if you need them to be public, by convention, they will be Pascal case and public. But anywho, I'm rambling. Let's go back to properties and we'll just get rid of this field because we're not gonna need this. So to create a property in Visual Studio anyways, it's really super easy. We're gonna say prop and I think hit tab twice. Boom, it's gonna put out a shell that we can fill in the information. So the first thing here is the type. We can just give it a type of string. Then we hit tab again twice uh, just to get out of that IntelliSense the first time. And then we're going to give it a name so we could say first name. And the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. And you can see we have this get set. So this is known as an auto implemented property. We don't have to do anything too crazy. Basically, this is going to create a, a private field behind the scenes. So we don't have to worry about it. But generally, properties are going to be working with fields and they're kind of acting as the gatekeeper to those fields. In an auto-implemented property, there's not any real strict gatekeeping and the, the field is made automatically for us. So this is the easiest way to create properties. We'll do another one, string, last name, and there we go. All right, so we created these properties. They'll allow us to store information similar to how the fields did, and we can access these from our program so rather than saying me.name, we can say me.firstname and assign that Caleb or whatever your first name is. You don't have to type Caleb if, if you're not Caleb. Then we say me.lastname and assign that curry or insert your favorite spice. And then down here in the console right line, we can say me.firstname plus, and then we'll put a space me dot last name. All right, so that's some concatenation for you. It should print Caleb Curry. We'll dot it run. And there you go, you get Caleb Curry. So that is a more proper way of doing what we did in the previous video. The previous video, we did get the same output, but the code behind the scenes wasn't as clear and it wasn't quite on the mark on the best way to do this. So this is a little bit better. So that's your introduction to auto-implemented properties. You can look up properties if you wanna get a lot of juicy details because they're fully customizable. And I'm sure we'll probably get into some of that in this series later on. So be sure to subscribe and check out the next video. I think we're gonna be talking about methods. All right, I will see you then.